kids. Here we go again. Um, if you saw my Facebook post, you see that I did this already and now I don't have it. It's gone. Uh, so I'm refilming it because that's what, that's what we do. We dust ourselves off, pick ourselves up and get right back to it. So I'm filming a little intro while my son naps and then once everybody's in bed for the night, I'm going to remove this hand and do another neutral mani start to finish. Show you guys what we need to have to do a mani at home. Show you what it's nice to have to have a mani at home. I'm going to talk about cuticle lines. I'm going to talk about a little bit about cuticle care um, and just little odds and ends that you need to have laying around. Um, I, this is for the Canadian Revel Facebook page. Somebody asked that I do something like this. Um, and yes, we do have a Canadian Revel Facebook page. We spend a lot of our time on there talking about igloo construction and donuts, um, poutine and dog sleds and some fingernail art stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's a very hardy group of people. We survive in the cold and uh, somehow find time in amongst the ice fishing to do our fingernails. So I'm doing it for you guys. Um, I'm going to hopefully, hopefully send all the video clips from my phone to my email and then I'm going to try to edit. And if it gets lost again, I'm not even going to bother editing. I'm just going to send it straight, straight onto YouTube. Forget editing. Uh, you're just going to have to listen to all of the rambling that I do. And it's a lot. So I apologize in advance. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's going to be as if you just got your starter kit in the mail, what you should have at home. Um, because I remember when I first got my kit last, it was it's pretty close to like exactly a year ago. I think I did my first mini, I want to say January 11th. And I only know that because of a, a post that popped up in like a memory thing. I, I don't have it like memorized. Uh, anyway, so when I got mine, I had uh, just my dips. I didn't even have a bottle of acetone or nail polish remover for that matter at my house uh, because I hadn't done fingernail anything in close to, I think, probably three years. Um, I used to do a small amount of nail art with just polish and some striping tape and stuff like that uh, before I was pregnant and had kids and stuff. And then I just, you don't, you know, for the first bit, you don't have time to do things like that. So I didn't. So I would just, my nails grow really fast. So they would grow long. I would cut them short, file them. They would grow long. I would cut them short. Um, and then I just thought after my son was born, like, I need to do something with my fingernails. I can't just keep chopping them off. So uh, I'm going to do them. I ordered my starter kit. It came. I had nothing at my house. I had, in fact, I had... I had this, I had this nail file because, um, this nail, uh, you know what? And I don't even know, like my mom gave this to me uh, honestly, probably 20 years ago and it's just moved from place to place with me. Um, I usually keep it in, I used to keep it in a kitchen drawer. I would just chuck it in there. If I broke a nail or got a snag or something, I would go, I would pick it out of the drawer, file it off, throw it back in. And like, I, I don't know what this is made. I think this was her nail file. Um, it's like some kind of pearlescent handle on it. It's probably like elephant tusk or something else that's illegal to own at this point, but it's made in Germany. It says so right there. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's just lasting and lasting and it's still, it's still effective. I don't know, but it, this is all I had when I did my first Manny and, uh, it came out not the best, but it also wasn't the worst. I didn't have any fingers glued together. I didn't have stuff all over my cuticles. So it was, I mean, it was kind of a success for the first one. I thought, you know, I am good at this. I need to immediately, and I did, immediately get online and order 10 more colors to ship to my house right away because I've done one manicure. Um, Cause that's like, that's kind of what we do, right? We do one manicure, you kind of get hooked on it right away. And then you hop online, you're like, I need to order 
every color that anybody has ever produced. I need 18 different kinds of glitters. I need to try six different brands of liquids. I need an e-drill. I need a cart. I need like, cause you just, you're like, oh, I'm a professional now. This is just, this is my life now. This is what I do. I do dip nails. And for some of us, that kind of is true. But for a lot of people and me for the law of, for, I don't know, probably four or five months, um, it was just something I did every, usually two weeks when I would start to get lifting, I would soak them off and put another mani on. Um, but then I started to really get into it. And now this is my life. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm going to go start to finish the stuff that you need to have. I'm getting so off track. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to wrap this up. I am going to do dinner, do bedtime, get the kids to bed, and then I'm going to sit down. I'm going to remove this mani and I'm going to do what I did last night, which is a straight walkthrough, start to finish. How do you do your cuticle lines? What's the timing? How do you get a good performance out of your top coat? The end. Thank you for hanging in. I will talk to you soon. Okay, so um, I have laid out here um, what I think are have to haves and a few things that are nice to haves. So when you get your starter kit, you're going to have at the very least one color powder. I'm going to use eucalyptus tonight because I haven't used it before um, and I think it's pretty so I want to try it. Uh, you need a base liquid, you need an activator, and you need a top coat. Um, I highly recommend that if you are just starting, you start with Easy Liquids. Uh, they give you a significantly longer drying time, so you have time to uh, clean up your cuticles and um, you know make any adjustments that you need to. If you get some on the side wall or on the side of your finger, you can you know pull it off with either your toothpick or your fingernails. Um, so that's what you definitely need. I would even go as far to say that. If you have a glitter or you have aspirations of using glitters, just pick up a clear dip right from the beginning. Um, I use Vivian from Revel. I like it. I've never had any problems with it. Um, I buy two ounces at a time and I go through it like crazy. I know some people have had trouble with saying that it leaves their colors or glitters cloudy. I've never come across that. I think that has a lot to do with what you're using to brush off your excess powder, which I'll get to in the other must-haves. Um, next, I think you need a aggressive file. This one has a 100 grit and a 180 grit side. The 100 grit is amazing for buffing the top of your nail to get rid of any major lumps, any major bumps that you have uh, that will happen with glitters and with Vivian on top. You can go at it pretty hard and smooth everything out with the 100 grit. And then the 180 side is good for refining your shape. Um, it's good for you know, getting rid of the little imperfections that are left after getting rid of the major ones. Um, if this is all you have, you can still get away with a manicure. Absolutely. You don't need anything fancier than this. Um, I also think that you definitely, definitely need some sort of a stiff brush to brush off the excess powder. Um, I know a lot of people like to use a proper manicure brush. I don't like it. I just think I get more control with a toothbrush. I buy them at the dollar store. You get cute little designs on them. This is my little pony. My three-year-old was with me when we picked these out. Um, so I, I see people asking online, oh, what kind of makeup brush should I use to dust off my powder? You shouldn't. You shouldn't use um, a makeup brush. A makeup brush is meant to pick up and deposit powder. Uh, toothbrushes or a manicure brush, something stiffer, is meant to brush things away. You don't want to just redistribute the excess powder. You want to get rid of it um, because if you don't get rid of it, your step one is going to turn stringy and gloopy and you're going to go online and you're going to say, what the hell? My whole step one is garbage. What happened? Well, what happened is you didn't brush off all your excess powder. So get something that is stiffer than a makeup brush. This is like a medium firmness toothbrush. Um, I, you know, give it a rinse under water because if there's nothing else other than dip powder on it, water will get rid of it. Uh, if you happen to get a bit of step one with something stuck in it, I have something here. I don't even remember what that was from. That must be privacy. 
Anyways, uh, you can use a little bit of acetone to clean it off. If you leave it soaking in acetone, it'll melt your bristles. So don't leave it soaking. Just give it a rinse in acetone and then underwater. Um, you also need, you definitely need a cuticle pusher. Um, if you are just starting out, it's very possible that the invisible cuticle on your fingernail can come up pretty darn high. Like it can come up almost halfway up your fingernail. Uh, with regular maintenance and cuticle oil, it will stop happening. Uh, but you definitely need a cuticle pusher and it needs to be a good sharp one to get that invisible cuticle off of your nail bed. Um, if you're getting lifting after two, three days, it's probably because you didn't get rid of all of your invisible cuticle or you're not using enough activator. But in this instance, for what do you need? You need a cuticle pusher to get rid of the invisible cuticle. I don't like using chemical removers. Um, I just soak my hands in lukewarm water for, you know, five minutes and then you can kind of see and it softens and you can push it back. I also don't trim it off because you kind of get into a bit of a vicious cycle of constantly having to trim it off because it gets hard and jagged and uh, kind of yucky. So uh, instead of doing that, push it back, do your best with it. In time, they will improve. And then also use cuticle oil. I make my own cuticle oil. I buy the pens off of Amazon. I make my own because I am cheap. So I just go to like Winners or Marshalls and buy a giant jug of jojoba oil. And then I also get some vitamin E. And then you can put any kind of essential oil or scent oil in there that you want. Um, like I said, I'm fairly thrifty. And I don't know any companies that send cuticle pens to Canada for less than a million dollars. So I make my own. And then also you have to have a buffer block. I like polar blocks. I buy them at Sally's. I buy them online. I occasionally buy them in bulk. This one has seen better days. It's getting pretty beat up, but it's, it's an awesome buffer. Uh, it's great for smoothing out the top of your dip. It's good for doing last minute refinements on your shape. Um, it's just a great buffer block. I have no, no complaints about it. If, uh, if you don't know if you have a Sally's around you or you don't like online shopping, I don't know who you are. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you can always buy the one off of Revel. I don't think it's a Polar Block branded one, but I have used the one that Revel offers on their site. It's equally as good. I have had no problems with it. I actually, you know what, Revels, I have one here. They do. Revels has a side on it that has no grit. It's just kind of soft. And I actually really, really like that it has that because you can use that to, to get like a final, final buff and shine before you put on your last activator and top coat. So you know what, this one might have an edge on the polar block because I do like using this. Hmm. Okay, we'll see. Um, yeah, so I think aside from... Oh, no, you know what? This, I think, is also a must-have. I think that uh, if you're going to be dipping, if you're going to be around these chemicals like acetone, like the dip liquids, just go and get a mask. Get one before you start. You will go online and you're going to get scared because you'll see, you know, 800 people a day saying, I have dip flu. How do I avoid dip flu? What is it? Is it the powder? Is it the liquid? Is it the nail filings? What is making me congested and sneezing and feeling like crap for a couple days after my manicure? Well, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's liquids. I don't know if it's a reaction to acetone. I have no idea. But I do know that as soon as I read about it, I bought myself a chemical odor mask and now I don't have to worry about it. I don't have to smell acetone. I don't have to smell the dip liquids. I don't have to smell anything. I'm protecting my lungs and I don't have to worry about becoming sensitive to any of this stuff that I'm using. And I would be absolutely heartbroken if I couldn't dip my nails anymore. So I got one. You replace it. If you can start to smell any of your liquids or whatever through the mask, if you can start to actually smell the chemicals, it's time to replace it. Um, usually it lasts me three, four months. They're not expensive. Just get one on Amazon. It's chemical odor mask. Get one. If you're going to be dipping, use a mask. Just protect yourself. Um, I think that's it for like the have to haves. Um, next, I will show you what is really nice to have and something that you probably will think that you need once you sort of 
get further into dipping, um, you will want some rubbing alcohol. Um, and you'll want it because you're probably going to find instances where you have a top coat. It might not be the same brand, but a top coat that is a little bit more finicky and you need to wipe your last activator off before top coating. Use alcohol to do it. It'll make sure that the activator on the top of your nail is evaporated, but not completely dried and gone because your your top coat needs the fumes off of the activator to cure but you can't get any activator on your brush so it's kind of tricky it's a bit of a timing thing alcohol helps take the guesswork out of it it's really handy to have around i use it for also disinfecting drill bits because i only use them on myself so i don't have to worry about like properly sanitizing them i just soak them in alcohol every once in a while to get them nice and clean because nobody likes using nasty drill bits uh and then this, uh, I don't know, I mean, I'm going to call it a nice to have, but for me, it's a, it's a have to have now. Uh, and this is how you get your nice, clean, fancy looking cuticle lines. This is just a dotting tool. I got it at Sally's. It came in a five pack. Uh, most of the ends have this proper ball on it so that you can, you know, dip into a gel or a polish and get, you know, a nice, neat, uniform ball on your nail uh, but this blue one and I don't know if it's every blue one in the five packs but I imagine it is they're probably pretty similar uh, has a really fine point on it on this end and I like using this more than I like using a toothpick or an orange wood stick which you can also use um, mostly because when this gets gummed up I can give it a swish in acetone and it's like it's brand new again or I even sometimes take it and file off any chunks that have gotten stuck to it. Um, I like it because it gets in really close, butted up against where your dip ends and your cuticle is. And uh, yeah, I don't know, toothpicks I find too fiddly. I constantly would you know, screw up and like go into my dip with a toothpick when I tried it. Um, orange wood sticks, again, they're awesome. They work well, but it it gets a little bit dull and it gets a little bit wider and then you end up tossing it out and I don't like tossing things out if I don't have to so I have this and I can use this a million times do not use the ball end of a dotting tool because it will make it look like you have two weeks worth of growth already because it's going to cause a giant giant space in there and that is not cute don't use that use the fine end or use a toothpick or an orange wood stick so I think that's probably all of the like gotta have it's to do dips. But again, like I said, when I did my first one, all I had was like that weird skinny file that is uh, made of an endangered species, I'm sure. And uh, I got it done. So if you just want to, you know, jump into it with whatever you have at home, give it a try. You know, who knows what's going to happen, but you're going to learn something either way. Uh, it's either going to go really, really well or you're going to fail miserably, but you will learn what not to do next time or you'll learn you know oh maybe I don't need all this fancy crap and I'm not gonna waste my money I'm just gonna use what I have here um, but that's what I need all the time to do my manicures so I'm gonna pause for a minute I'm going to uh, set up again and then I'm gonna get into how I actually do a manicure on myself with eucalyptus because I'm really excited to try it so I'll talk to you guys in a minute. Okay, hey guys. So I'm going to now get into actually doing my manicure um, now that it's, you know, 800 years later. Uh, like I said, I yap. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't get to talk to adults during the day. So even though I'm just talking to my phone in the basement, it feels like I'm talking to adults and I like that. Um, so right. When you first start, you want to push back your cuticles. Um, I don't have a ton going on right now only because I always keep clear dip on my nails uh, so my cuticle doesn't get a chance to really grow up my nail bed um, and when I do do this when I have completely uh, bare nails I'm not very aggressive about it because it hurts and like it, it hurts if you're aggressive and I don't I'm not into that I don't know some people are I'm not uh, yeah so I don't go wild with it I just push it back until it's like you get a bit of resistance and that is good enough for me. Um, yeah, no, I'm not into the whole, like, lengthen your nail beds thing. It's not for me. 
Um, okay, so yeah, ready to go after you do that. Like I've got a little bit happening here. Typically I would go and get my drill bit and kind of drill that away. I don't lay my drill bit on, and I'm going to show you what kind of drill bit I use. I use this little round diamond ball drill bit, and I don't put it on my nail bed at all. When I'm getting rid of cuticle with my drill bit, I just like barely touch it and it just, it goes away, flies away. So if you have an e-file and you want to use some of your cuticles, I recommend that. It's awesome. So here we go. I'm uh, using my Easy Liquid and um, I like using it. I, uh, when I first started doing this, there wasn't an Easy Liquid. It was just all of the pro liquids. Um, but when this came out, I started using it and I like it better. I just do. Because you know what? You see that? I have like a little glob on there. If this was a pro liquid, it would be trash. But it's not. It's an easy liquid. So I can just grab a wipe, wipe it off. And now we're good to go again. Um, so what was I saying? Right. Okay. Um, easy liquids give you a lot more time to go around your cuticle. And um, also when I do my manicure, a lot of people will lay their hand flat on the table, brush their liquids on like this, and then dip. And I don't, I don't do it that way. Um, I did do it that way, but I was running into trouble. I was running into flooded cuticles. I was running into flooded sidewalls. And so I kind of started doing my nails facing myself like this, as if I'm doing somebody else's nails. Because then when you put your base liquid on, I lay it about here on my fingernail, the brush, and then I push the product back to my cuticle. I don't start at my cuticle because that's when you can flood in there. And if you have your finger facing you and it's kind of pointing down, if you have too much base liquid on here, gravity is going to work for you. It's going to take the liquid to the free edge so that if you get any lumps, any bumps, they're going to be down around here and you can easily file them off. Uh, if, if you've got your hand flat on a surface, if you have too much, it's going to flood in your sidewalls. It's going to stick to your cuticles. And you're just going to, it's going to take a lot longer to finish it and do your buffing and filing. And I'm not into taking forever to do this. Sometimes I am, but not if I'm just doing a single color and want to get it done. Um, okay, so let's start. So I like to fan my brush out a little bit on the side of the bottle. And here we go. So like I said, I laid my brush lower than my cuticle and I push product to it. Lay and push and dry. And I also lay my finger on top of the dip. I don't dip it all the way in. Um, I also found that if you do that, sorry in here and you can go around your cuticles, get anything off of there. Um, I found that dipping your finger into the jar like you'd see on your Facebook advertisements that I'm sure you now see all over Facebook. If you've been looking at anything dip related, um, they shove their finger straight in the jar. And I mean, I'm sure it works for some people. It doesn't work for me because even just the small amount of pressure from the dip powder can make your base kind of smudge all over the place and push it around. You don't think that the powder has much you know, resistance, but it has enough, I guess, to smush your powder around and it drives me crazy and it was driving me crazy. So I was like, how, why the heck? So I started laying my finger on and then you don't, you don't have that problem. Um, and I will say that I'm not doing what I should. I usually will have, I don't really get, that was actually a pretty good job right from the get go. Anyways, I usually have a lint-free wipe laying around so that I can brush my base onto it after I touch my nail, but I don't have any loose powder. I finished my clear layers earlier in the day and activated, so I don't, it's kind of like brushing onto a naked nail right now. I don't have to worry about powder contaminating my base liquid, but once I go back to do a second coat, as soon as I touch this nail, I will brush on my lint-free wipe before I put it back in the bottle to avoid contamination. Uh, you also don't need a fancy lint-free wipe. I used to use, before I bought them, um, newspaper. I would just lay newspaper out on my work surface and use that because it's lint-free. It keeps showing up at my house, even though I don't want it to. And I'm not talking like an actual newspaper where I can 
get information from. I'm talking about like junk mail flyers that nobody wants to deal with. Uh, they just constantly show up. So I was using them. Uh, and it worked perfectly fine. It protected, minimally protected my tables. Uh, you kind of have to layer up with it to actually get any real protection because, oh man, the step one activator, all that stuff, acetone will absolutely eat through furniture. So be careful. Be careful. So I'm doing this eucalyptus and it's actually coming out really pretty knowing that I'm going on vacation on Monday, it's Wednesday night. Uh, I'm going to Mexico for my 10th anniversary. Uh, I'm going without the kids and it's freaking me out because when I booked the trip, um, it was, I think eight months ago when I booked it. And I was thinking to myself like, Oh, my youngest, you know, he'll be 14 months by the time we go on this trip. So it'll be fine. He'll be like, a grown adult baby you know have like a job and a proper haircut and you know it's not going to be a big deal it won't be I won't be freaking out because he's going to be an old man by then but now I'm at, you know it's coming up and we're leaving on Monday and I have to drop him off at my sister's house she's taking both my kids uh and I'm kind of I'm kind of freaking out about it um I know she's going to take excellent care of them that's not a problem I just I'm looking at him now and I'm like he doesn't have a job he doesn't have a proper haircut. He doesn't, like, he's a tiny wee little baby and he needs his mommy every second of the day. And it's freaking me out that I have to leave him. And uh, I bought every instance of cancellation insurance that you could. Um, they really hosed me on the insurance because I was feeling super emotional when I booked the trip. Uh, but I won't cancel it. I won't. I will not. We're going on this trip. I want to get some actual proper sleep. I want to have somebody else cook my meals for me. I just want to relax for a little bit. But, oh my God, it's really... I am, I'm having a hard time. I'm struggling with the idea of leaving them. Ugh. Okay, so I have my first coat done. I like to leave it for, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds to make sure everything is well adhered. I mean, I know that I started... What finger did I even start on? I don't remember. Uh, I will start brushing off whatever finger it was that I started on. And uh, I like to, to brush really aggressively because I don't want to have to worry about contaminating my step one. Um, but I still, like I said, will have a lint-free wipe to brush my, my base brush on before it goes back in the bottle from this point on. Uh, so yeah, what was I talking about? Yeah, so I'm, <laughs> I'm doing these nails and I know that these aren't going to be the nails that I wear on vacation, so I'm going to have to just take these off and redo them probably Saturday night, I guess. I don't know. But I'm probably going to spend all of Saturday night just snuggling the babies because I'm going to miss them. All right. So, coat two. Oh, and also, if you're clo when you close your step one bottle, close it to, like, there. Don't close it all the way if you want to open it again. Yeah, sorry about that. I had to pause because I had to sneeze. Um, all right, fan my brush again a little bit. Lay it close to the cuticle and push towards. And now this is where I will use my lint-free wipe, brush my brush off, and then go around with my dotting tool again. You know, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that my last video got uh, chewed up by the cloud and just spit out God knows where. Uh, because I'm finally using my dominant hand to do this. Last night I used my non-dominant hand um, to do all of my nail work and uh, my left hand is just an idiot. Like it, uh, it can't even like do up a zipper. 
Like, I don't know, I don't know. It doesn't make any sense to me. I've been doing this, you know, painting my nails now or dipping my nails now for, like I said, close to a year. But before that, I, you know, painted my nails and all that stuff. And I was actually pretty into painting my nails for a while. And I always thought, like, oh, you know, if I do this long enough, my left hand will stop being such an idiot and I'll be able to, you know, do more things with it. But no, that's not the case. It's still it's still a moron and I can't do up a button with it. I can't like I said I can't it can't sort out a plain zipper. Like it's just it's so useless. It's crazy, right? Because you can do so much with your dominant hand and you can do it well and then you have your other hand who should be just as smart but it's almost next to useless just funny to me and I'm so jealous of people that are ambidextrous like imagine the things you could get done if you could use both your hands simultaneously yeah I'm jealous of them yeah so this is turning out better than uh, last night's did because yeah, I get to use my good hand. But also, you know what? It's weird. Um, it's kind of the same on both hands. My middle finger, the nail bed, is so much wider than my other fingers. And I don't know why. It never used to be like that. It honestly started happening five, six years ago. Uh, my middle finger nail beds just started growing wider than the other ones. And uh, it kind of trips me out. I have no idea why something like that would happen. So I try to shape um, my nails so that it's not super obvious. And you know what? I wouldn't even care. I wouldn't even care if they were all just super wide. Uh, it's just that it's it's so different than the other nails that it it kind of sticks out to me when I look at it. I'm sure nobody else notices stuff like that because I've never looked at anybody's fingernails and said, "Oof." That one nail bed's off, you know, it's off by a quarter of an inch. Uh, but now, now maybe I will. Maybe now I'll start noticing that on other people too. I hope not. This one isn't even as bad as this one. Like that, that is a wide nail bed. And uh, I even took some of the dip off the side here so you can't really, really tell. I don't know what happened to my finger. That made that happen, but it happened. And also, the cuticle on my thumbs is like straight across. It's not like a nice curved cuticle line. It's always straight across. I have noticed that on other people though, so maybe that's like a more common thing. I just, I feel, now that I'm talking about it, I feel exceptionally silly for the amount of thought that I've put into uh, my nail beds because who cares? I mean, obviously I care. Obviously I care deeply. Um, yeah, so I'm going to let that sit again for a tiny little bit. I'm done with the color now. Usually if I, if I was planning on leaving these on for a week, two weeks, I would now go in with a layer of Vivian, do the exact same steps that I just did. Uh, but since I know I'm taking these off probably in two or three days, uh, I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to activate and... Um, I'll come back as soon as these are brushed off and activated. Okay, so I'm back and I left one finger unactivated um, so that I could show you how much activator I use approximately. Um, so um, I'm, I have a glass activator bottle and I have a glass finishing gel bottle and you can pry these out of my cold dead hands. I'm never giving them up. I'm just going to keep refilling them. I have probably like I think six ounces of uh, activator refills to put in here um I just really like I'm gonna level with you I do not like the plastic bottles uh however I have seen um and not in my experience yet because I haven't had to order liquids in I don't know three or four weeks uh but I have seen that Revel has now changed this portion of the plastic bottles to be clear so you can take a look at how much liquid you have left without having to take the whole shebang out of here and they also put a weight in the bottom 
So now you're not going to tip them over every time you do anything, because I have, in fact, tipped over an entire bottle of step one. Luckily, the table that I do my nails on is uh, basically a throwaway table. So it didn't matter. I just, you know, mopped up what I could and put my puppy pad back over it. But yeah, the plastic ones, I tip them over because they're, they are really, really light. And uh, I'm never giving up my glass ones if I don't have to. So yeah, like I said, you can come get these from me, uh, but you're gonna have to fight me for it. Um, so when I do my first coat of activator, I soak, uh, I soak it really, really well. I usually will go back in for another dip. Um, and I cap the edge and I make sure that my sidewalls are well coated. Um, because this is what the activator is, what is curing your base. So that is what is making sure that it is adhering properly to your nail. Uh, if you don't get enough activator on there, it's not going to cure well and you're going to lift, it's going to pop off. You're going to have lots of trouble. So just, I mean, activator, um, just brush it on. And, and like, I've seen people say, oh, my activator brush separated. Who cares? You could brush activator on with a stock of broccoli. As long as your nail is soaked, it doesn't matter what the brush looks like. Um, yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, if your step one and your step two brush go a little bit wonky, then it's annoying, of course, but, uh, the, the activator brush doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. It can, you know, it could be like, you could wear it down to just one bristle. And if you soaked your whole nail, it's done its job. So after I give that a minute to uh, dry, then I will go in with my buffer block. If it was a glitter and I had some big chunks anywhere, uh, that's when I would use this. I would get rid of the big chunks and then I would go in with my buffing block. So um, I'll show you how I buff one of these nails. I'm not going to buff all of them on camera because nobody wants to watch that. It's boring. Um, but yeah, I like to go down by the cuticle. I like to kind of stick an edge in there. It just kind of re refines it and makes it smoother. And I like to do an uh, cuticle to free edge motion. Um, I don't know. I, I it just it works better for me. I used to try to do this, but I would like catch things and dig the side of my nails into the buffer box. So this works for me. This works better for me, so that's what I do. And then I actually use a 220 bit or 220 grit block also. You don't need this. Uh, I just like using it. I guess I probably should have put this in the beginning of the video. Whatever. Anyways, uh, Sally's has them. They're blue with black. This has seen many better days. Many, many better days. So, uh... Yeah, I think it, it really helps with the uh, finish of your uh, top coat. So I like to use this. And if you use this enough, you can actually get it to look a little bit shiny without a top coat. But I'm not going to do that because, like I said, that's boring. Nobody wants to watch that. So I basically just do that on all these nails. I'm going to do that, but I'm not going to make you watch it. So I'll be back once all my nails are buffed. And then we'll go in with second coat of activator. I'll show you the timing to get your top coat on properly. Uh, yeah, I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so I have, uh, buffed and that's where we're at now. This cuticle is a little sore. I nicked it earlier. Ow. Uh, okay, so, um, this is when timing is kind of important. Um, even when I'm doing both hands at the same time, I do one hand at a time when it comes to last activator and top coat. Um, so for the last activator, I mean, I, I have taken my brush and I've brushed every little bit of dust off that I can. Uh, I always start with my pinky and I work my way to my thumb. I don't know why, that's just how I do it. So again, I make sure that everything is coated very well in activator. And capped, but I mean, you're not really capping it with anything. Um, and you can see it soak in. You can see it absorb. You can tell if you've missed anywhere. Don't miss anywhere. Because if you miss somewhere, your top coat's not going to cure there. So it's going to stay sticky. It's not going to dry properly. Uh, it could dry matte. If it dries at all. Uh, 
And yeah, like my brush is separating here. It, like I said, it doesn't matter. You could brush this on with a stalk of broccoli or anything else. Um, so I like to then wait a minute and a half to two minutes, definitely a minute and a half, uh, to speed the process up. Like I said, you can use, um, rubbing alcohol. I'm not going to, because I'm going to pretend that you don't have this right now. So we're just gonna, we're just gonna hang out for a little bit. Oh, and you know what? I broke this nail and I had, a, a tea bag tip fix on it and it looks nasty underneath because I didn't. I didn't use my drill to like make it smooth underneath when I put the tea bag on. So I apologize if it looks like super nasty while I'm filming this, but that's just, I assure you, that's just acrylic that is, it won't come off unless I use my drill and I just didn't because I know that I'm changing these nails again before I go on vacation. So, uh, yeah, what's everybody been up to? Did you have a nice holiday? Uh, I'm just trying to, trying to kill some time. I don't know, like, if anybody has any ideas of what kind of nails I should do for vacation, because I am completely stumped. I have no idea what to do. I kind of want to do neon yellow. I kind of want to do neon orange. I just want to do something bright, because it's going to be hot and sunny, and I'm, I am not a fan of winter. It's not, it's not for me. I'm not that girl. I have winter gear, because I have to have it. But I would hibernate in my house and order my groceries for delivery from November until end of March, if I was allowed. I'm not allowed because I've got kids and they like playing in the snow. It's not my jam. Okay, so it's been, I think, a minute and a half. So for top coat, um, your first coat is going to be speedy, speedy. Two quick passes per finger. Uh, and don't spend a lot of time on each finger. And this coat, I will wipe my brush off on a lint-free wipe every time it touches a nail before it goes back into the bottle. A new lint-free wipe, I should say. Don't use the same one you've been using. Here's my like super weird wide fingernail, so I might have to do a third. No, well, yeah, a little bit. God, a bloody fingernail. Can you get plastic surgery on a nail bed? God, what a ridiculous thing to worry about. What a ridiculous thing to worry about. That's it. I'm not worrying about it anymore. I don't care. I have wide middle finger nail beds. I'm proud of it. Ugh. All right. And I, you know what? I hate painting my thumb. I hate doing this on my thumb. I don't know why. It's just it's awkward. There's somebody come and do my thumbs for me. Uh, and so immediately after I finish that first coat, you can kind of look at it and you can sort of see it's shrinking and curing, adhering. Uh, I right away go in and do the second coat. So for this coat, um, I load my brush up because I like, I think it's, it is, uh, important so that your brush isn't really touching the nail on this coat. You just sort of want to float product onto your nail. So I have like a good amount of product on here. I try to make sure that my brush doesn't fan out when I'm doing this because then you know that you're really just distributing product and you're not brushing uh, the actual nail with the brush. You probably don't need to wipe your brush on a lint-free wipe after this coat, but I do it anyways because I, like I said, I'm trying to preserve these glass bottles uh, so that they can be buried with me. Um, yeah, so just float that top coat on the best you can. And also, top coat is also pretty important to not hit your cuticles and flood your cuticles with. Uh, because once your top coat cures, it is hard as a rock. And uh, if you're touching your cuticles, the first bit of any growth you have, it will grow away from your cuticles. And that is a spot where moisture can then get in 
underneath your top coat, underneath your dip, and uh, cause lifting. So it's just as important to not get top coat on your cuticle as it is to not get base on your cuticle. And I think a lot of people don't think about that. They just think, oh, it just needs to be shiny and it's done its job. Well, no, it's kind of sealing your manicure in. Uh, so don't don't hit your don't hit your cuticles. So I'm gonna give this um, usually about a minute and a half, two minutes to set up, and then I'm gonna come back and do my cuticle oil and do a final little yeah we're done all done so I'll be back in a minute once this is all dry okay bearing any horrible technical failure see see I told you guys at the very beginning uh, not the very beginning of this video but the first one I ever made I always looked like I was attacked by birds just recently um, so I'm hoping that nothing technically awful happens but we're done we did it that's it we're done I put some cuticle oil on I left it maybe another minute, and uh, yeah, that's it. We got them done. That's cuticle lines. I mean, you can't, this light is just horrendous, just awful. Uh, but eucalyptus is really pretty. Maybe, no, I'm not going to wear this when I go to Mexico. I'm not. I know that I'm not going to. But this is the one that I did last night. These are very <laughs> low-key neutral shades for me, uh, but I like them. Maybe I'll start doing a little bit more of this. Maybe I'll stamp on top of them. I don't know. Anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging in. This is a long video, um, but I, I, I hope somebody finds it helpful. Uh, I hope there's at least one tip or trick in there that you haven't used that you will now use and think, oh, hey, that makes a difference. It's useful. I'm glad that I wasted however many minutes of my life listening to Tina yammer on about nails and uh, her children whatever the heck else I ended up talking about. Uh, I'm going to snap some picture of the, uh, pictures of these in the morning in some decent daylight and I will put them up probably at the end of this video. Please, please, please video gods, let this one make it to YouTube. Thanks guys. Talk to you later.